Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today with some Christmas house shaped gift tags. So I have been loving everything house shaped lately and I thought it would be so super fun to create some house shaped gift tags with the incredible Lawn Fawn Build a House dies. These are created kind of having to piece together a little bit um, because they are made to you know, work on their own or with the reveal wheel to be interactive with that upstairs window. But I want them to be a front and back tag. So I want them to have a finished look. And it took a little trial and error to figure out the best way. Each tag is going to have a front and back, meaning I'm going to die cut the house shape twice. There is the window opening. So there will be a window opening in the back, but we will be backing the window with a yellow piece of die cut cardstock that can work to shine through both the front and the back. I didn't decorate the back window. Um, when we get to that, you'll see that. I'm thinking though, I almost wish I would have die cut another wreath and a bow to decorate the window. One of the great things about these tags is they actually only take two die collections. They take the Lawn Fawn Build a House dies for the base of the house, and the Lawn Fawn Build a House Christmas add-on. So really simple in that respect. Now I am using the Honey Bee Stamps Salvaged Bricks Stencil and some Pink Fresh Studio Misty Coast Ink with a blending brush to apply that salvaged brick look to these Lawn Fawn Fog Cardstock die cut houses. I'm really loving this fog color this year as well. I have, pardon me, mentioned this before in videos, but while I'm sharing these ideas, please remember to kind of incorporate your own color scheme or vibe to these projects. For me, my gift wrap is all reds, red, white, uh, tartan plaid, black and white buffalo check, red and black buffalo check. So many of my tags, I want them still to be useful. Even though I'm making them to share and everything like that, I want them to be something I can actually use. So mine are going to match the gift wrap that we're using this year. So that's why you're going to see a lot of grays and black and a lot of red. Now I am building the house pieces. I did stencil both the front and the back because I thought, well, I want my whole house to match, even though the back really isn't going to have a lot on it. The other thing, and I know I mentioned this a lot in my tag making videos, I always go into my tag making for the most part, <laughs> uh, but when I'm making something intricate like this, with the idea that I want the recipient to be able to maybe use this afterwards. By backing these house pieces back to back and adding all the little die cut, you know, roof and all of the great little things, it's going to be really sturdy. But I want it to be really cute, really pretty, because if they want to hang it on the tree afterwards, you totally could. Um, these are really, really pretty little houses. I love how they turned out. Um, Definitely a simplify, simplified version of the gingerbread house uh, house shaped card that I shared here recently using honeybee stamps because that creates that house shaped card. So that's kind of the big version. These little houses are the smaller version and they really did make just the cutest little tags. I'm delighted with how they turned out. Now there's a little wreath and a little bow in the Christmas add-on that coordinates with this. We are gonna decorate the windows, we're gonna decorate the door. I did die cut the door from red. I wanted more red on my house and I thought, oh, our little red door is gonna be cute. We will stamp a little phrase on the door. You totally don't have to. Um, this is gonna be from the Simon Says Stamp Ho Ho Postage Stamp Set. I really looked through my stamp sets looking for something that would fit. The Peace and Joy Sentiment Fits. I will tell you, I almost used the Honey Bee Stamp Santa's Workshop Sentiment in the Gingerbread House add-on stamp set that I used for that card, which I will link at the end of this video. So if you want to see some more house type of ideas, you can check that out there. The um, Sentiment Santa's Workshop will fit on this door. There's also a North Pole sentiment. I believe it says North Pole from that. Uh, it will fit 
as well, I'm pretty, pretty sure. I chose not to use it for this, but I think it would be just as cute. So just kind of personal preference. I say shop your stash, see what teeny tiny sentiments you've got in your stash that are holiday themed that will fit on somewhere on this house. I just picked the door because I thought it was a great spot for it. Um, and add just a little something there that gives that Christmas vibe. Now, one of the most awesome things about the Christmas add-on is the lights. They are a little special. I did die cut them from Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum and then the actual light string of lights from uh, Hero Hue's Pitch Black cardstock. And I'm going to glue that onto the vellum and then I customize the vellum because you can color that in with an alcohol ink based product like a Copic marker, which is what I used. You can create colored Christmas lights. Well, mine are red and green because that obviously coordinates with the rest of my tag but you could do them in, in any color. I briefly contemplated leaving them, just the pearlescent, because it has that gorgeous shine to it, to them, and having them be white lights on the house. I think the red and green has a little bit more of that Christmas vibe that I wanted for my card, but it's definitely an option if you want to. Um, they are a little tricky to work with. I did use Ranger Multi Matte Medium and I have a fine tip applicator. It's a scrap perfect applicator. There's a link to that in the supplies in the underneath here, underneath the video. So if you're wondering what I'm using, which is gonna put a nice little thin line of glue, even at that, a little bit tricky to work with. I highly recommend a pair of tweezers to kind of help hold them down until the glue dries. Once it's dry, it's fine, but kind of just manipulating them and probably what made it a little trickier is I'm using vellum. Vellum is not as sturdy as cardstock, but I can't stress enough how much I love how it turned out, even though it was a little tricky to create. These are gonna be tags. I did create three of them. I die cut all of the components off camera and then put them together. Um, you could create multiples of these. It's gonna be a little more time consuming. There is a lot of teeny tiny pieces. If you are following my handmade holiday series, which um, I created some multiple tags using some honeybee products the other day, and that'll be the other video I link at the end of this one. Um, the pieces are a little bit bigger, goes together a little bit faster. When you're working with teeny tiny little pieces like this, it tends to be a little more time consuming. Thus why I put these together maybe a little earlier in the month than I normally would uh, because when it gets to crunch time, I want something that goes together a little bit faster. It just depends. Um, you guys know I love die cutting. I love fussing with all those little pieces and I love creating something that's beautiful on the gift packaging. And as I mentioned, the house theme stuff is totally my jam this year. I'm loving it. So I did go ahead and fuss with all these pieces. I did not, but you totally could. You could add extra. You could add some Nouveau Crystal Drops or other type of product to um, the wreaths, the roof, the whatever, um, just depending on what you wanna do there. So there's other things you could do to dress these up even more if you want to. And definitely keep in mind, you can die cut these and put these together in any color you want. Now I left this in because I wanna show the error of my ways. I originally thought I am only gonna decorate the front of the house. On the back, we're gonna stamp our to and from. You can grab that from any stamp set that you have. Um, so that we have somewhere to write who the gift's for and then you know who's giving the gift. And I'll just add a little, you know, that that house panel is going to be enough. It's not. When I looked at this, okay, you can tell that the roof hangs off the edges. The awning front on the lower level of the house, that hangs off the edges. And then the bottom piece does stick out further. I didn't like how that looked. So we really need to replicate that on the back if you want to give it a much nicer finished look. You don't have to add an extra door or anything like that. You could if you wanted to, you could add a back door. I did not, I did add the steps because that hangs off the edge as well. Um, but I did not add any of those extra things. But I also think you need to frame up the window. So I framed up the window. I had to go back and die cut those four pieces. I did 
die cut the steps to begin with, but I needed to die cut the three pieces to finish off the back of the house and the window piece from my dark slate gray cardstock. That's some Simon Says stamp cardstock, by the way. And then I did finish the bows on the front of my house with some Nouveau Crystal Drops and White Blizzard, meaning they're going to be nice and sparkly, which will help the bow on the door especially stand out from the red door. And adds that little touch of sparkle that I was looking for on my card. Now here I had originally just glued the stairs in place. I pulled them up before the glue dried. Um, I didn't care that it really ripped my tag because it'll, I'll recover that up. But you can see that by adding these backing pieces, it really does make the back of the tag look so much better. And honestly, I and I'm just telling you guys straight up, I did not show it in the video. I don't show it in the finished tags. And it probably does not matter, but I will go in and add a wreath to the back windows of this house because I think it needs it. <laughs> um, I just think it needs that little pop of color. And again, it does not matter. You don't have to. You will notice that because I already pre-stamped this tag, it covered up the two. I went ahead and left that for this one only. These are gift tags, y'all. They may get thrown away. It's fine. That's totally fine. I do this for my joy enjoyment. Um, if someone else loves the tag, good. But I make these for me. And because it's a gift tag, I didn't worry about it on this one. I'm actually just going to go back in and add the two underneath the from. For my remaining two tags, I will stamp them correctly uh, with the to and from shifted down just a little bit. But remember, I didn't think I was going to stamp or add all the, not stamp, add all those other die cuts on the back. I think it's important to kind of, I always, I know I mentioned this a lot, but I like to share along my creative journey the things I find that work and that don't work. Because there are always those things when we are creating in anything where sometimes it's a hit and sometimes it's a miss. Well, that was a little miss. I miscalculated um, how the back of my tag was going to turn out. So here you can see I've shifted the to and from down. We'll just go ahead and assembly line style it now. I'm glad that I kind of put one together first before doing all of them that way because I was able to adjust as I made the rest of my tags. If you were going to make even more of these, that's a good opportunity to kind of fix any of that at that point. Okay, stamping pretty much is done. We do have the front doors that we need to stamp with peace and joy, but we'll get to that. Let's just finish assembling our houses, both the front and the backs. We're going to attach these back to back. And then I found what worked best, which I'll show here in a second, is using a crop dial or another type of hole punch to punch a hole right underneath the roof of the house and it's going to be right where one of the lights from the string of lights is, and so it probably will punch it off. I know on one of mine, I was able to kind of move it, but remember, they're out of vellum. They're a little bit dainty anyway, no matter what paper or cardstock you're using. Um, you might lose that one, and it might lose it anyway over time because the string is gonna hang right there. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. These are gift tags. Um, and that just seemed to me the best place to put it that would be the sturdiest, that I wasn't going to have to worry about it ripping out or anything like that. So we're just going to assemble. You could even, if you wanted to, you could add another window on the back of your house. I probably would not. I will add an extra wreath, but I don't think I'll add anything else. But if you want to make it really, you know, back to back, you totally could. But it does make a really cute little individual house. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out to start with. I mean, I had this idea, but obviously you don't always know. Um, and I thought it turned out really cute. I love these house shapes. Um, I don't know. Do you guys love them as well? I'd love to hear. Leave me a comment and let me know. Um, totally digging all the little house themed products out on the market and house dyes especially. Here um, at Simon Says Stamp, we are celebrating die Simber, which I am totally down for. I love die cutting. It's one of my very favorite things. Um, 
love finding fun ways of using dies. This is definitely a project where I'm trying to find something else to do with dies rather than card making or the traditional type of card making, where I'm using products made for cards for gift tags. So definitely, I love shaped gift tags, like unconventional shaped gift tags. As much as I love just that standard tag shape and creating all kinds of cute designs with it, I really, really dig the or the non-traditional rather uh, shaped tags. So we're just finishing off these last little bit. Really the assembly of these went together fast. If you have all the components ready to go and I like to kind of stack them into little piles when I'm die cutting I die cut assembly line style too. I did all anything in light gray, anything in dark gray, anything in red, anything in green and then all the yellow. That was kind of my uh, Prog or progression of how I die cut things, but I would stick them in stacks so that when I went to make the tag, I could just grab from my stack and put it all together. And there, we're just sandwiching the front and the back together to finish it off. Aren't these so cute? I don't know. I was really happy with how they turned out. I just um, I love when something in my mind turns out the way I think it's going to. And I love, I mentioned this in my video for honeybee stamps, but I love that these companies are coming, they come out with the base. So this is the Build-A-House base from Lawn Fawn. There's the Halloween add-on, there's the Christmas add-on. I love that they are including add-ons in, um, you know, subsequent releases or subsequent... <laughs> subsequent, how about subsequent, releases that can be used with that first die purchase. So it really extends the life of the product, which I absolutely love. Here I'm just assembling those lights again, and then very carefully, I think the straight line one is a little bit fussier just because there's so much play in it and I want it to be exactly straight. That's probably just me. It doesn't matter if it is or not, but... Uh, I wanted it to be perfectly straight along the little cute house there. And so I would play with it quite a bit. And then I'm pinching it with my tweezers to hold it in place. You can color the lights when they're on the house or not. You're gonna have to be a little more careful when they're on the house. On this one, I think I forgot. And so I'm coloring them when they're on the house here and just very, very quickly, one red marker, one green marker, really, really fast. but. I think it adds a huge difference to that cute little finished house. I think we've got some stairs left and then it's time to finish it up. Oh, it looks like I've got a sentiment left to stamp on this one as well. So not too much left to finish up. My tags will punch holes, add string, and they are ready to go. Now I'm just going to take that crocodile and punch a little hole in the top. Any type of hole punch that's nice and strong that can go through a couple of layers of cardstock I would highly recommend. I've had this forever and so it just seemed like the perfect thing to use. I've got some red and white baker's twine left over from the Simon Says Stamp tag kit for, for this year that uh, sold out here a couple weeks ago. I have lots of that left, so I've been using it on all my tags because it matches it perfectly. I love that. And I love the little red and white pop there at the top. I think it works great. So we're just going to punch a hole in the top of each, thread through our red and white baker's twine, and that is going to finish up these Christmas house shaped gift tags. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for some more gift tags featuring, these are featuring Lawn Fawn dies, and then some Simon Says stamp greetings, and a Honey Bee Stamps stencil. The supplies I use to create these gift tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a new card making or paper crafting video. Here are a couple more videos, one featuring a house shaped Christmas card and the other featuring some gift tags. We can always use more ideas for gift tags. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy holidays, and we'll catch you next time.